Good morning again and welcome back. My name is Julie Amon and I have the privilege of serving as Vice President for Student Development Services here at Trinity River. On behalf of all my team, I want to share best wishes for a great fall semester. We all look forward to working and learning together to serve our students. Although this fall will be very different than any of us could have anticipated, we are still here to serve and support our students. As we'll hear from my team members, we will continue to support and engage our students virtually throughout the fall semester in myriad ways. We hope that you will encourage your students to connect with us online as well. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my team members to review some of the primary and critical ways that we can work together to support, engage, and connect with our students. And I'll turn it over to Carter Bedford, who will take it from here. Good morning, everyone. And so just to let you know, there'll be just an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we'll have some conversations about student activities with our switch to virtual campus events. Um, we'll give you an update on our community service and service learning activities. We'll talk a little bit about our TRSDS Blackboard page, which has become our home for student development services. And we'll also just let you know that we'll be introducing gaming and recreational sports in the fall semester. And yes, I know we are virtual, but we're going to make it happen. You'll also hear from Dr. Dantrell Smith to give you an update on the Intercultural Network and the Men of Color Collaborative, as well as Compass. Um, and Dr. Deidre Turner will tell you about all the things going on in advising and counseling, about how they continue to serve diligently while in a remote environment. Ms. Kimberly Carter will talk to you about student accessibility resources and provide some updates and some things you need to know about facilitating your coursework in this online environment. Um, health services is up and running um, and just quick information about online appointments that are coming soon. Uh, and Mr. Tim Kaysen is here who will give you an overview with student conduct prevention education uh, and a myriad of things that you see here related to academic integrity, care team, Title IX, and prevention education programming that is on the horizon. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Kelsey Bratcher, and I am the coordinator of student activities for our Trinity River campus. I would like to share with you a little bit of information today about student activities. And of course, I'll have the help of Carter as well to share that information. Student activities, we you may see our events on campus that we are interactive. We have different speaking engagements. We play school supply bingo during first week. And so this is the experience outside of the classroom through student organizations, community service, rec sports, gaming, and more. You'll see here that um, our Phi Theta Kappa chapter here at Trinity River Campus stayed active over the summer by presenting different ways for students to get engaged by playing games online with each other for some fellowship. And they also participated in a community service project, creating goodie bags for one of the local hospitals. So the next thing that I would like to share, of course, uh, Carter had briefly mentioned this, but our new home for a lot of our areas and, and student development services, in fact, all of student development services can be found at this bit.ly link, bit.ly slash tcctrsds. That's our new online home for all of our services. And you'll see all of those as well today too. But we'll have a showcase for our student organizations, we have our new Trailblazer Leadership Academy, which will be 11 weeks of amazing opportunities for students to hear from different guests about leadership topics, and they'll be able to receive some leadership credit points and a, a little certificate and some other goodies for participating in that. And you'll also see that our virtual displays, instead of the displays that we have had on campus for our different heritage and history months, we are moving those to an online virtual format and to be interactive. All of those activities will be found on our TRSDS Blackboard page under student activities. I think we should take account of how many times we mentioned TRSDS. If you could go back one slide for me, please. Thank you. Um, over the summer, we did a Juneteenth celebration where we were able to partner with various areas across campus. Thank you to our library staff, 
uh, who created a Juneteenth homepage. But so our virtual displays are up and running. Uh, you will see those throughout the course of our Cultural Heritage Month celebrations. Um, as we continue our Trinity Talks, we're looking at some more topics related to some of the things that we're seeing um, across the country. And so how do we have those conversations within our campus community about things that are going on around social justice and other issues of concern? Uh, our campus programming, you'll see things from Constitution Day and thank you to our faculty who are partnering with us. Um, various games, guest speakers, meet and greets, just opportunities for our students to just come together and just say what's going on in their mind. But we'll also have a focus on our civic engagement and community service. Uh, gaming and recreational sports. I mentioned that earlier. We are introducing a site called I Am Leagues, um, and you may have heard of that if you've been at other institutions, but it gives us the opportunity for us to work and have college pick them and for us to host um, gaming tournaments and other things all from the comfort of your home, and we're able to keep all of that on a centralized website. Our Student Government Association will continue um, and so we're currently looking to fill some roles within Student Government Association, but we'll also have more of a district focus on our SGA. Um, and then more information on our virtual first week activities is coming this week. And you will see our virtual first week. You will see the following week, the week of August 31st, a resource week. Um, and then the week of September 8th, you're going to see an involvement week. And so a lot of activities to keep our students connected online and all of it will be housed out of our TRSDS Blackboard page. Health services. And so health services is still here to serve. Um, many of you may have heard or know that health services has recently, or the district, excuse me, has recently partnered with UNT Health Science Center, and they have provided a medical director. His name is Dr. Jeff Beeson. Um, and so with his guidance in terms of clinical care, our health services is almost in a way rebranded um, and they are here to provide community referrals, answer basic health questions uh, and facilitate our health and wellness education uh, here at the Trinity River campus. And so starting very soon and we're actually testing it right now, you will be able to book appointments online in fall 2020. So for questions symptoms and other things, you'll be able to book services online and speak to one of our registered nurses. And so we're excited for that possibility. And then service learning and community service. As you know, Eddie Brassard is our head, uh, assisted by Tristan Brooks. And so our staff is committed to serving you. So invite us to your online department meetings or schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of us because we would love to continue to work with you on service learning and community service endeavors. Uh, just some highlights very quickly. This summer, uh, you'll see a list of faculty and staff who participated with Campus Compact uh, in a fusion course with uh, facilitators from all across the country as we talked about basically serving during a pandemic and some of the things we're seeing locally in Tarrant County, we're seeing across the country. We're gonna continue partnerships with the city of Fort Worth. And so the Trinity Trash Bash this year will be a two day affair, uh, September 19th and 20th. And we'll be also providing month long service opportunities. So each month you will see another service opportunity that we'll be promoting where you can jump in and you can participate. And it may be, it may take 10 minutes. It may take 20 minutes. Some of it may be done from the comfort of your home. Some of it may be outside in the community but we'll have month long service opportunities, a different one each month. And for those who are looking forward to 2021, where we may have a sense of normalcy, our annual campus day of service in partnership with the March of Dimes uh, is scheduled for April 17th, 2021. And so all of these things and more uh, will be sent to you as we go through the semester. Thank you. All right. Good morning, TCC. My name is Dantrell Smith. I'm super excited to talk to you a little bit about the Intercultural Network and what we have going on for fall. Um, to give you a quick overview of what the Intercultural Network really does is one, we connect students with faculty and staff that can serve as mentors um, on campus during their transition to TCC. Another piece of what we do is we provide a safe space, whether that's in person or virtually, so students can come together and have dialogue and conversations as it regards around what's really going on or anything that comes to their mind that they want to discuss. 
And the third piece that the Intercultural Network does is we connect all of our students with resources, activities, and events on campus to help them be successful. Um, so how do we do that? Great question. So we have a couple of, I guess, if you want to call them organizations or groups um, under the Intercultural Network umbrella. One is our Men of Color Collaborative. And then the second is our Caring Open Mentoring Program, Advancing Student Success, which is COMPASS, which is focusing on our women. Um, both programs focus on developing the holistic student. And so what do I mean by holistic student? So we have five pillars that we focus on, one being academic development, of course, um, the second being career development, leadership development, so forth and so on. But we have five different elements that we try to focus on for our students. And so not just telling them to be academically focused because when they're applying for those jobs, one of the questions that they'll receive is, you know, what other things were you involved in during your time and in college? And so we help them to be able to articulate that as well as to um, help them understand their different skill sets and develop leadership through taking them to different conferences, um, pairing them up with mentors, just anything that we can do to help advance the, the student. Uh, the second area is we have our Intercultural Network Student Advisory Team. And so these are students of color who collectively come together to really listen and talk about some of the issues and challenges of students of color on campus at TCC. Um, and so these students, along with myself and some other staff members on campus, uh, we dive into some of the real issues and then we try to create solutions to try to um, assist those students that are dealing with certain things. And so um, the Intercultural Network Student Advisory Team is new, but definitely is one that, that has been uh, truly impactful um, on campus. Um, so how can you get involved? How can you really connect? Well, we need mentors. Um, and so let me, let me back up. So one of the things that we talked about when we say uh, mentoring is it's kind of under one of our pillars for um, support for, for students. And so what do I mean by that? Well, mentors are required to go through training. And so in that, in, it's like a two hour rigorous training where we talk to you about, you know, the different aspects of mentoring, some of the expectations, how to create um, um, outline for, for those meetings. Um, but we really need you to, to serve as, as a mentor. We have a lot of students that come to my office um, or contact our office and say, hey, I'm in need of a mentor. I'm in need of somebody to really help me navigate my experience or my time here at TCC. I just don't know what to do. Um, and so we really need, need assistance in, in that particular area. Um, you can mentor our men of color um, as well as our compass, which is for our, our women. Um, and so we actually have um, some mentor training sessions that'll be scheduled um, for the fall. Um, you can also schedule on demand with myself. I can come in to um, your office, or not really come into your office, um, but we can do a virtual uh, training session one-on-one uh, -on -one if need be. Um, but we do have online training sessions that you can um, uh, sign up for in uh, Center for Teaching and Learning. And so that's an opportunity for you um, to work with our students and to really connect and help them support themselves as they're going through the TCC. All right, some new program initiatives that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, one being Making Sense of Diversity podcast. Um, so myself and another colleague across the campus went to a conference where we actually learned about doing a podcast. And so in the spring of 2020, we launched Making Sense of Diversity. And during the spring semester, we talked about multiculturalism. And so we interviewed various faculty and staff and students across the campus to get their understanding of what the word multiculturalism meant to them. And then we dived and talked about other aspects of multiculturalism. 
Um, this summer, we focused on race relations, as, as, as Carter mentioned uh, earlier. A lot of things is going on in America in 2020. And so we wanted to take full advantage and give people an outlet or platform where they can express those thoughts clearly and talk about that. Um, and so if you go to the TRSDS, like Kelsey said, a lot of our things are on the Blackboard page. Um, and you can listen to some of the podcasts and just some of the dialogues and conversation that takes place. And they have truly been um, extremely engaging. And so I encourage all of you all to take advantage of that. Um, the next big thing is community, real people, real stories. Um, I've had the, the great pleasure of, of partnering with, with Kelsey on this, this initiative. Um, we were listening to a, um, uh, we were at a, at a conference, a virtual conference. And, and in the session, they talked about the the art of learning through storytelling and so i called kelsey up and i said hey we got to make this happen in some form of fashion and, and her great mind went to work and so we developed real people real stories where we interview faculty staff as well as students and we just talk to them a lot about what's really going on and give them an opportunity and a platform to share some of their expertise of how they're coping and dealing with certain things um, you can follow us on intercultural network on instagram um, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. is when we do the show. It's a great show. Um, you can actually watch full interviews on Intercultural Network IGTV. Uh, we will be doing a presentation on tomorrow, so make sure you have an, a stop by our, our workshop to learn exactly how we did it. Uh, I think we have up to 30 or 31, I think, um, episodes, so you have a, a lot to catch up on. Um, Intercultural Network office hours, um, for the fall will be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's it. Thank you. Good morning. This is Dr. Deidre Turner, and I'm the Director of Counseling for the Trinity River Campus. Advising and counseling our department services are still available through a variety of modes. As you can see on the screen, students can reach our success coaches, advisors, and counselors through online chat, um, which is um, up on our website, and also phone appointments. And all offices can be reached by phone, staff email, and uh, or office email. Um, advising and counseling staff are also available on campus. You'll see them um, outside of the cafe Monday through Thursday to answer quick questions regarding registration and all offices are offering programming and additional information again through our TRSDS Blackboard page. From the TCC website under academics and also under services, students can reach an academic advisor or a counselor by chat for course selection and degree planning. Returning students um, and now any student can also log into WebAdvisor to schedule a phone appointment with an academic advisor. We're not doing any appointments in person, um, but they can have a phone appointment with an academic advisor. Those that need personal or career counseling can also set an appointment by calling the office phone or requesting through the tr.counseling email address. Our success coaches are working hard this summer, assisting new to college students navigate the admission process and receive their referrals to take their TSI. As the fall semester begins, they will also be available for those that are teaching STSC classes for class visits um, to discuss the importance of academic advising appointments. And they, this semester, will be hosting student success workshops through TRSDS Blackboard and still working with um, CACO for virtual high school visits. Uh, Career Services, they continue to offer my plan. You also hear from them at a later date about how you can invite them to your um, classes as well. Um, they're still reviewing students cover letter and resume assisting with gaining on and off campus employment. And again, um, class visits, they are available to come um, speak to classes. Career services staff can be reached by phone and email. They've got a terrific TRSDS Blackboard page that also offers a variety of resources as well. Students that need to take any number of exams the, or assessments, the TSI, the HESI for our CEE students that need TABE, 
ESOL placement, Alex PPL, CLEP, those things can still happen. Um, by appointment, students can take some of these tests, such as the TSI on campus, um, and most, such as the HESI, they can take remotely. Students can use the TR testing services email or call the office for more information on the tests that they need to take. Transfer Center is still going strong with Transfer Tuesday. So each Tuesday, um, starting September 1, they did some of this, they did several this summer, but starting back again, September 1, um, they'll have Transfer Tuesday. And during these uh, transfer days, uh, they will have three different sessions, Transfer 101. Um, staff will also discuss the essentials about transferring to a university through in that session. They'll also have a transfer session specifically for those that are transferring to a BSN program and uh, those that are wanting to transfer to a four-year business program. Virtual college visits are also being hosted through the TRSDS Blackboard page and advising services are available by phone appointment. Finally, the Vet Success Center is now known across the district as the Veterans Resource Center. By phone appointment and chat, students can still learn how their benefits affect their course selection and degree planning. Vet to Vet counseling is still available. This year's Veterans Week and other programming will be hosted on, you guessed it, the TRSDS Blackboard site. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Student Accessibility Resources. My name is Kimberly Carter, and here's our tour of SAR. So it's myself, Yvette, and Ophelia Bacon, who most of you know as Fran. And as everyone is, here's the thing, everyone is working virtually. You'll hear that a lot lately. So we are also still working very virtually through our office. Um, Leah, who was with us, actually retired pre-COVID, lucky her. Um, so that for us, so we are in the process right now of uh, making the determination of, um, of replacing Leah. So right now it's Yvette, Fran, and myself. So what is SAR? Uh, SAR, Student Accessibility Resources, or as I finally fondly call it, the office formerly known as Disability Services, is here to help our uh, students be get the same and equal access, um, our students with disabilities, of course. The student meets with the SAR coordinator, who would be me, to determine the reasonable accommodations. Um, and we also help to empower our students and help them advocate for their rights, um, especially it, we do that with our first time in college students. The transition from high school to college is very different, so we do a lot more empowering and advocating with our first year and our first generation students as well. So, how does the student qualify? As I mentioned, they have to meet with the SAR office and they actually have to bring us documentation. Uh, without the documentation, we are unable to provide services that includes temporary services. So once we get the documentation in office, I will go through the documentation to make sure that the student is actually um, eligible to receive accommodations in college. Sometimes some of the modifications that they used when they were in high school doesn't always equate to what we do in college. So once I have the documentation, we actually will sit down um, and look at the diagnosis, how that then connects with the classes that they're taking. Um, let me step back a, a bit in that in order for a student to get um, the opportunity to interview with us, we actually have to have the student enrolled in class and that makes sure that we are able to provide them with the proper accommodations for the classes that they're taking. So each individual class has or can have a different opportunity for an accommodation. 
So, as I mentioned, it's, uh, accommodations are determined individually. Um, just because a student has ADHD, ADD, um, dyslexia, doesn't mean that the accommodation will be the same for every student. So we together, myself and the student, will sit down and make the determination of how that particular diagnosis impacts them individually. And then we will look at the class and make the determination of what accommodation they need for the class. Um, the appropriate accommodation is then put in place um, following the federal guidelines and policies and procedures for using accommodations. So how can a student get connected with SARS? First, they can self-refer, which happens a lot, which we appreciate and uh, we've done a great job. The staff um, will go out sometimes and sit on Main Street and just talk with students. Um, it gives the student to come in, speak to us in a setting that doesn't quite feel like the principal's office, as they sometimes jokingly refer to our office. Um, but it gives them the opportunity to be in a more natural setting and um, sit down and, and get a idea or sometimes the staff and I will go to classes which we love to do it gives the student the opportunity to see us outside of our class as well so we're really happy to do that um, even virtually with your classes you as a faculty member or a staff member can refer a student to SAR and when you do just make just know that we can't um, reach out to the student the student actually has to reach out to us so um, one of our great friends over in nursing will frequently send us an email that says, hey, I'm referring this student and we'll copy the student and one of us will respond. Thank you, received your message. We will wait for the student to request the services from us. We want to make sure that we don't breach their confidentiality. If they want to use accommodations, we are really excited and happy that they will, but they do not have to use the accommodation. Of speaking of breaches of confidentiality. So we may or may not have note takers as much now that we're virtual. Um, in some classes, there still may be the opportunities where you may have an interpreter or you may have a CART provider in the course. Um, and sometimes you will know who the student is and sometimes you won't. Please don't introduce the two. Um, again, it's a breach of confidentiality and we want to make sure that all of our students have the same level of equity and inclusions. Um, they want to remain un unidentified and that is certainly their choice. Um, and we don't want them to be uncomfortable in your class. So no, unfortunately, we cannot tell you what the student's disability is, but when they meet with the coordinator and meet with anyone in the office, we will encourage them to have a conversation and not just show up in class and hand you a piece of paper and go and sit down or email you and then not have a conversation with you. Um, there are some instances where it is helpful to understand what the diagnosis is um, and it gives you a better opportunity for assessments for the students or for the students to get um, a better opportunity for their learning style. We can't force them to give you that information, but we highly recommend it. And sometimes we even often role play in the office um, where I will pretend to be one of you pretend I can't be all of you. You are all amazing and fabulous, but it gives a student the opportunity to look at what it would look like to have a conversation with the faculty person. Um, if by chance you have a question about an accommodation, please feel free to contact the office. We can talk to you about how the accommodation fits uh, within your class, etc. And then if you don't believe me, here are some of the things other people, some of our students mostly are saying about SAR. My disability is not keeping me from doing what I want to do. I just have to do it differently. That's all. Things in the world are not fair. It's how you accept things, how you react to things that's going to make a difference in your life. I want to be treated fair, fairly and equally to others. There is a resource that could really, you could really benefit from. The SAR Office and Student Accessibility Resources 
development helps students with documented disabilities get accommodations for the classes. I brought my zero GPA up to a 3.5 and I owe it to SAR 100%. A disability doesn't mean you're less than, so we're here to support you. Like with tests, you know, I really need that extra time, and I study hard, and so going there to take the exams, uh, I, I, I feel like I make letter grades better. We have sign language interpreters, we have CART providers that come into the classroom, and they pretty much capture everything that the professor says and the students say, so it's captioning in real time. My note taker, um, he, um, it's the slack, so to say. I got a paper quarter I can use in class. They just checked out for me for the semester. They can do it all on their own. We try to make them as self-sufficient as possible. We can't go out and say, do you have a disability? Students have to come to our office and say, I have a disability and I need help. They can bring their IEP report. They can bring uh, anything from a licensed medical professional. And then our coordinator discusses with the student what their needs are, what their concerns are. And then she will place accommodations with the student that will put them on a level playing field. It's all private, it's all confidential. So the professors don't even know what the disability is. The only time they'll know is if the student reveals it. Everyone needs help. There's no stigma. No one's gonna know your business. It's not just that they can give you resources. It's a family. SAR is a good organization that's really friendly and will help you get where you need to go. SAR is helpful. SAR is important. SAR is fun. SAR is uh, a, it's a life changer. SAR is what's making me feel more confident in myself. SAR is the reason why I'm going to graduate college. For more information, visit the SAR website at www.tccd.edu slash SAR or contact the SAR office. Alrighty, well, good morning, everyone. This is Tim Kaysen, Director of Student Conduct and Prevention Education. We're gonna go ahead and advance the slide and just go over a few different areas that I oversee and what these areas can do for you. So as you all may be aware, when it comes to student conduct and prevention education, that's a, a wide range of offices and services that address student behavior. So we're gonna talk about student conduct and a little bit of academic integrity review a little bit regarding Title IX and sexual misconduct, as well as review the CARE team and Eliminating Barriers Fund, and then discuss some prevention education efforts in all of these areas. So student conduct, um, we're gonna go ahead and advance and just talk to you a little bit about some of the most common or severe violations that we typically see in this area. Um, when it comes to common or severe violations, some of these are definitely more applicable within the in-person context, but given that we are going to have some of our classes that are conducted in person due to some uh, capabilities with delivering those programs virtually, they very well may still happen. And so we want to make sure that you're all aware that when it comes to our student behavior, whether in the virtual or in-person environment, we want to do what we can to make sure the students are aware of those expectations, but also know what their rights are when going through our processes and also figuring out what we can do to protect the health and safety of not only our campus community, but all of those involved. So alcohol and drugs definitely is not super common here, given that we are um, more of a commuter campus and we don't have those residential facilities, but it does happen every now and then. And so if you have any concerns, let us know. When it comes to theft, we definitely see that um, primarily in the context of basic needs and security. So students who maybe don't have enough to eat, stealing from the bookstore, don't have the school supplies, so they steal from a classmate, things of that nature. And so if you're made aware of those incidents, definitely let us know because we want to make sure that not only do we, you know, hold those individuals accountable for the behavior, but also talk about what resources we can implement to help those students succeed. 
Um, what we're definitely probably going to see in the virtual environment is going to be the last three. So kind of failure to comply, disruption or abuse. When we talk about abuse, it's not just physical abuse. It can entail verbal abuse of some type. And so definitely make sure that you're monitoring those discussion boards post closely. Make sure that you're monitoring the interactions that your students are having in the virtual environment as well as the in-person environment. And know that you know, students can still have those disruptive entity uh, incidents in the online context. So we wanna make sure that you let us know about those so we can maintain the academic integrity of your classes. When it comes to the student conduct process, it's a pretty simple process. We get the report. After we get the report, we do do investigations. At times, we may offer remedies or implement some type of interim measures on the students, like a restriction to attend a class for a certain period of time, or you know, having them meet in a different setting with the instructor versus the full in-group meetings. So just know that that may happen if we encounter incidents, and we really, really appreciate your cooperation and flexibility in those instances because we know that it does add a great deal of work to you all, and so know that we really greatly appreciate that partnership. After the student goes through the full investigation, though, and has the opportunity to share their perspective on the reported behavior, there will be an administrative conference, which is a formal meeting where the student kind of gets to review everything that has been said. They get to share their perspective one more time, and then a determination is made on if they did or did not violate the school policy based on the preponderance of the evidence, which means more likely than not, and a decision is issued. If the decision is issued and the student feels as though they have grounds for an appeal, they can submit that. It is optional though and not required. We don't have very many appeals at all, maybe one or two for the entire district every year. So it's very, very low. And that's because we try to meet our students where they're at and provide them with an educational process, not a punitive one. Um, and then at the end of that, they would be expected to complete any sanctions or outcomes that are assigned to them if they were not changed during the appeal process. And then for reporting, as with all of our types of behaviors, you're going to see that you would go to tccd.edu slash incident report to submit any concerns. So for Title IX, um, same song and dance as always. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this slide because I do know that on Thursday we're going to have some time where you're going to be doing your compliance training and getting those matters completed. But our school policy, our employment policy dictates that if a student discloses any form of sexual misconduct to you, so sexual assault, sexual harassment, dating or domestic violence, sexual exploitation, stalking, etc., the employee is required by school policy to report that because we want to make sure that we get that student in a safe environment, but we also want to make sure that we provide them with resources and options. It doesn't matter if the disclosure is in reference to an incident that occurred 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago. The expectation is always to make sure that you submit that report so that we can get good information to those individuals. There is new, there are new state laws that dictate um, that as well. Um, so just make sure you're getting those reports submitted to tccd.edu slash incident report. And under nature of this report, which is a question you'll be asked on the form, please make sure that you select Title IX. Here's a screenshot of what that form looks like, just so you can see it. The top up there where it says if there is an immediate risk to life or property call, that whole section is uh, a little bit longer now. We provided some more guidance there, but I left it short on the screenshot just for the purposes of trying to capture more of the full page. But right there, you'll see where the red circle is. That is where it says nature of this report. And from that little drop down menu, you'll have the option to select academic, student conduct, care team, or Title IX. So if a student does disclose to you any form of sexual misconduct whatsoever, please make sure that you're always selecting Title IX there because when you do that, it also sends a copy of the report not only to the campus deputy Title IX coordinator myself, but it will also send a copy of that to Dr. Coronado, our Title IX coordinator, 
as well as Katika Harris, our Title IX compliance officer. And so by doing that, you're meeting your requirement to share this information with the Title IX coordinator because it's automatically copied to them. And then knowing too that in these instances, you're supposed to disclose anything and everything that the student shares with you. And so some of those details can be pretty hard and pretty personal. And so if you submit it to Title IX first, we are then able to filter out some of those more personal nuanced details before referring it to any other campus entity. Um, very often we do send our Title IX students who are going through that process to the care team to provide some resources and services, but let us take care of that on our end, on the back end, because we can filter out some of those more personal details first before sharing that with the care team group, which is comprised of anywhere from eight to 10 people. Speaking of the care team, the care team, we are still up and running, functioning and moving. And as um, you'll hear about a little bit tomorrow in our updates, providing services to lots of students. Um, the care team's whole onus and purpose is to provide assistance to students when they're exhibiting concerning behinds, are uh, concerning signs are disruptive or potentially threatening to themselves and others. And so given the context of everything going on in the world, we have so many students that are going through really challenging times like basic needs and securities, having, not having the ability to pay for their internet, home, rent, all of those things, um, as well as just the general stress and distress that is associated with these really challenging times. So these different um, behaviors that you're going to see from students are not going anywhere. They are increasing. The way that they're displayed this year, though, are definitely just going to be a little different given the virtual context. Um, and then some of our outreach efforts are also going to look a little different given the virtual context because we're not able to have some of those face to face, you know, organic conversations like we used to. So definitely be aware of that. Know that tomorrow during our breakout sessions, uh, Geronimo Aviles and myself will be presenting on the care team and some intervention strategies and what we can do as a campus community. So please come if you would like to that because we'll talk about some of those virtual outreaches that we're going to be doing. But this group will conduct threat assessments, develop action plans, and connect individuals with helpful resources on or off campus that it can, ass can assist them. And so if you know of a student in distress or crisis, please submit a report at tccd.edu slash incident report. Um, kind of related to the care team, but a separate area that we oversee is the Eliminating Barriers Fund. So this is a grant program that was funded by you all, as well as some really terrific donors that want to provide financial assistance to students who are impacted by emergencies that may impact their ongoing attendance and enrollment <clears throat> at TCC. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so know that this fund is very much still working and you'll see some of the, that those numbers tomorrow. But please, if you encounter any student that is dealing with some type of financial challenge, let us know because we can try to provide them and hopefully provide them assistance through this program as long as they meet the eligibility requirements. We are, um, we'll begin accepting applications for the fall semester on September 9th, 2020, because we have to wait until after the census date has passed. And then from there, uh, the link can be found at tccd.edu slash incident report. Um, I'm seeing a question. Will we include a verb on our syllabus outlining if we must report anything? Yes, so um, there is an automatic inclusion in your ICRs now, um, just like there is for some other types of things. There is an automatic statement regarding Title IX in your ICRs. One thing that I really would advocate is if a student does disclose any form of sexual misconduct, I know that there is that automatic statement in your ICR. But please also go ahead and give them just a heads up, whether that's a phone call or an email that you are going to submit the report, because it definitely adds to more of a warm handoff versus me giving them a cold call down the road. If that didn't answer your question, feel free to post 
another question there and we will get it addressed. So prevention education. When it comes to prevention education, one thing that we're really excited about this year is that we are going to be expanding and growing these efforts more and more. And so some of you may be familiar with the Southeast campuses model known as DASH Squad, which is D-A-S-H-H, -H, DASH. And it stands for Drugs, Alcohol, Sex, Harassment, and Hazing. And so this year we're really excited that there now is gonna be a one college model where we have a district commit DASH squad that is gonna provide support and assistance for campus specific DASH squads that are gonna be leading the efforts for their campus. So each campus will now have a DASH squad and we'll all be programming around the same learning outcomes and same events to provide a consistent experience for our students while also having the flexibility to develop campus specific programs based off of our needs or programs. For example, someone who is working in the, you know, um, dental hygienist program may need a little bit of a customized outreach versus someone who is going through our auto mechanic uh, programs. So we have that flexibility there and we're really excited about this. So look out for more in terms of shared calendars and groups because it's gonna be a really great opportunity for us to collaborate across the entire campus because this dash squad will have representation from academic affairs cee all different parts of sds the police we will have student me members and more and then academic integrity i'm just going to give you all a little teaser i know that y'all have heard some really great things today already from american public university and we'll hear a little bit more from them tomorrow but also on thursday we're going to be going a little bit more into academic integrity, talking about our area, how to report, how to um, track it in your classes, and then some just tips and tricks on how to uphold it in your classroom. And so just know that we are all very accessible. We're all working and we want to make sure that this semester is as best as it can be for all of you and for our students because that's our number one goal. And so up on the screen, you're going to see all of our contact information for everyone that has spoken today as well as a few that haven't. So if you need anything, please reach out to the specific person and we'll get you in touch. If you don't know who to reach out to, just reach out to any of us and we'll make sure that we get you to the right person. But thank you so much. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, this is Tom again. I just want to express my appreciation for this is a really amazing uh, student development services team. And I know you all are aware of the fact that most of the issues and barriers our students face, they're not academic. They are, they are life and everything related to it. And these folks do a phenomenal job of trying to keep people and have activities that help them keep both feet in the boat and help them pull one in back in when one's hanging out. And I, I just can't say enough. And don't forget, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, Guided Pathways is a, it's a, it takes a village kind of effort. And these folks are right there with us on the front lines. They, they experience it a little bit differently, but we are absolutely all in this together and, and we appreciate them very much. So. With that said, I need to make a few closing announcements. Um, I need to apologize to Pete Portillo. I failed to mention him on our uh, committee team, our, our Connections Week committee team. He was a late joiner, that's my excuse. But um, So thank you, Pete, as well. And then also, uh, there's been some questions about links for these meetings. It's a real good idea to navigate through Connections Week through the web page. Uh, and that link was shared. And then each session typically has a separate link. As we go from session to session, we, there's different links. So just try to use that web page. You, if you got evites, I think you can find the links in there too. But the web page is, is a far smoother experience. So planned announcements. Um, I sent an email out uh, late last week about uh, learning management system showcases. I uh, just wanted to remind you that that went out. Uh, the Brightspace, the D2L Brightspace session is going to be from 2 to 4 p.m. on Wednesday of this week. Blackboard will be 2 to 4 on Thursday and Canvas will be 2 to 4 on Friday. And we are at the beginning stages 
of uh, selecting our, our LMS moving forward. So don't get left out of discussion. We, we, I mean, faculty will have a tremendous amount of input into this. So please, please participate fully. We want you to be heard. Um, other reminders, House Bill 2504 information is due. You got to need to have your ICRs and your CVs updated. Uh, make sure you get those into your dean or your admin, whoever, however your division does that. So we need to get those posted. Please be reminded that we, there is an expectation now moving forward that we use we all use Grades Journey for course grades to help clean up a lot of things, including dual credit. Uh, Toro Tuesday, we have a Toro Tuesday meeting uh, tomorrow. So everybody is encouraged to wear their TCC attire all day. For those of you who around this summer, we started having Toro Tuesdays, which is really just a chance to connect and relax and and not do a lot of work and just you know share some informal things and it's, it was a lot of fun so i encourage everybody to participate with that also need to remind you that digital.needs is still your go-to place for you for students for staff to get help with you know covid related technology needs especially with dealing with you know remote situations um, talk a little bit more about this tomorrow uh, but Susan Smith and her team has done a phenomenal job uh, trying to help us get us outfitted with what we need. And then a couple tidbits. This pertains to you know on campus class, and we do. I did schedule a meeting. If you haven't gotten an invite yet, for all faculty who are uh, going to teach a face-to-face -face class, we're going to have a meeting. I think it's one o'clock Friday, just to kind of talk through some situations and things. But I wanted to let everybody know that. You know, if you are on campus, it is absolutely required that masks are worn in public places and that you practice social distancing. And that is not really negotiable. Um, and in, you know, in class, um, if students are not willing to comply, that's something that we'll have to confront and uh, you know, have them leave the class. We'll talk more about that uh, on Friday. And then also some people have, have opted to use temperature checks. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that we, it's not a, can, a college uh, policy to do temperature checks. So you can offer them, but you cannot require people to take temperature checks at this point. So uh, with that, oh, I also shared uh, ooh, this weekend, I think, some, some online tips. Our, our Connect campus has been pumping out material that will supplement the material that we had on our session today, which I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Um, regarding uh, online tips, uh, they've got a kind of a, a seven, seven most important tips or something to that effect. Um, and then they've got a full blown presentation as well. So I want to remind you to take a look at that. I think it will align very well with what you heard this morning. Um, and then they have also got instructional modules that they've advertised via email. Uh, those I'm told are very, very good. So if there are no questions in the chat, I am going to dismiss you with three minutes to spare to go to your division and department meetings. All the links for those meetings have been handled by those uh, divisions and departments, so they are not part of the uh, web page, I don't believe. So um, without further ado, I wish you good luck and uh, we will, if I don't see you in your meetings, we will definitely talk to you tomorrow. Bye.